Let's find the limit of this sequence, if it exists. The sequence negative 3 to the n over n factorial. This is a more difficult example because we're going to have to use the squeeze theorem for this sequence. Note, firstly, that this is an alternating sequence. Because we have a negative 3 raised to the power of n, the terms of this sequence will alternate between negative and positive. So the only way it could possibly converge is if those negative and positive terms are both approaching zero. So in this sequence, note we could write the negative one separately from the three. We could write it like this. So we have negative one to the n and three to the n. And this limit exists if and only if this limit without the negative one is equal to zero. Again, that's because for this sequence to converge, its negative terms and positive terms both have to approach the same thing. That's only possible if that thing is zero. So rather than worrying about this limit, which alternates between positive and negative, let's worry about this one without the negative. If this limit equals zero, we'll know that the limit of our sequence does exist, and of course it would also equal zero. Now, the terms present in this limit, we'll call those bn. So bn equals 3 to the n over n factorial. That's just our sequence, but without the negatives. So then an arbitrary term of this sequence bn will look like this. We'll have all those powers of 3 in the numerator from the 3 to the n. And in the denominator, we'll have n factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 and so on all the way up to n. So this is what a general term looks like, and once we pass this factor, looking at this term of the sequence, every denominator is bigger than four, well, the numerator will, of course, continue to be 3 in each subsequent factor. So all of these factors are less than 3 fourths, because the numerator will still be 3, but the denominators just keep getting bigger. But that means every term of our sequence, bn, is less than this. This consists of this part multiplied by the upper bound of the rest of the term. The rest of these factors, we said, they're all less than 3 fourths. So if we replace them with 3 fourths, that would make something that is bigger. How many factors would we have? Well, it would be 3 fourths to the n minus 4. The minus 4 comes from the fact that there are 1, 2, 3, 4 factors that need to be excluded. It's only after those four factors that we get all of these guys that are less than three-fourths. Of course, those one, two, three, four factors correspond to the first four terms of the sequence. So you might think we need to specify here that n is at least four. We have to be at least four terms into the sequence for this inequality to make sense but really we don't. If we consider a value of n that's less than four, like one, two, or three, this exponent would be negative, and so we would actually flip this fraction, and it would become something that's bigger than one, which would make this just even bigger. So the inequality is certainly still true, even though it gets a little weird. Now, we can go ahead and simplify this expression a bit. Three times three times three times three over one times two times three times four is 81 over 24. We also have 3 fourths to the n times 3 fourths to the negative 4. That's really what this is. So let's take the 3 fourths to the negative 4 out. That looks like this. Since it's a negative power, we can actually flip the fraction to make it a positive power. Thus, we have 4 thirds to the 4. And that still leaves the 3 fourths to the n. The 3 in the denominator to the power 4 completely cancels out with the 81. One factor of 4 in the numerator cancels out with a factor of 4 from 24. That leaves three factors of 4, which is 64, and 6 in the denominator. And of course, we still have 3 fourths to the n. And that reduces to this. Finally, we can start to work with an inequality and use the squeeze theorem. We know that each term of our sequence, bn, is positive because we got rid of the negative 1. We also just showed that it's bounded above by this, 
32 thirds times 3 fourths to the n. Then we can take the limit of every part of this inequality. Note that when we take the limit, we need to change the less thans to less than or equal to. The limit of zero as n goes to infinity is just zero. And then we have the limit of bn as n goes to infinity, and the limit of this guy as n goes to infinity. Now as n goes to infinity, 3 fourths to the n will go to zero, because 3 fourths has a magnitude which is less than 1. Hence, every additional factor of 3 fourths just shrinks it further. So as n goes to infinity, this goes to zero. So the limit is just 32 thirds times zero, which of course is zero. Since since bn is trapped between two things which we know approach zero as n goes to infinity, it must be that the limit of bn is zero by the squeeze theorem, which means our original sequence an also converges to zero. Remember, the sequence bn really is just the absolute value of an because it got rid of the negatives, and if the absolute values approach zero, indeed the sequence itself also converges to zero. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Audio.